Bank at Henry Ford at Jackson Hospital as we celebrate National Hospital Week, Erin McGreal Miller. Hi, Erin. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Great to have you back. I appreciate it. It's been a year, I think, since yes. uh, the Milk Bank was uh, inaugurated. That's right, it's coming up on a year, yes, and lots has changed. Well, first of all, uh, because it's so new, there are mm -hmm. probably people that don't even know that we have it or what it is. Sure. What is it? What is it? Yeah, so um, our milk bank is a nonprofit milk bank where people who have an excess of breast milk can donate that mm -hmm. to babies who really need it um, for all kinds of different reasons. So we screen donors, we accept their donations, and then we process the milk, um, test it for safety, and then once we have determined that it's ready to dispense, we're able to provide it um, throughout Henry Ford and, um, and here in Jackson in particular. Awesome. And Jackson's pretty lucky because uh, there's only, what, two in the whole state? That's correct. There are only two in the entire state. So to have one here is really exciting. Where are you located? We're located at 200 Southeast Avenue, so right across the street from the hospital, which is very convenient, in our own building, which is very nice. So have we discovered that the, um, the need that you thought we had uh, exists? Absolutely. We have absolutely found that there are a lot of people who are requesting donor milk. Um, we're utilizing it here in Jackson um, at the hospital. When we first opened, our goal was to one day be able to be the sole milk bank to provide donor milk to Henry Ford Jackson Hospital. So we, um, we were accredited in June, which meant we were allowed to start dispensing milk. And by August, we were able to take over as the um, only milk bank to dispense to Henry Ford Jackson, which is really exciting. Um, and then from there, we actually have been able to expand throughout the Henry Ford system um, because of the generosity of our donors. Um, we can't do it without them. You know, without our donors, mm -hmm. there is no milk to share with these babies who need it so much. So absolutely, we have seen that there are lots of families who need it and um, lots of donors who are gifting it. Well, I had the opportunity to get a tour mm -hmm. even before it opened, so I saw some behind-the-scenes stuff. Did, and, yes. And it reminded me of a... a a dairy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it is. It's funny because, you know, working for the hospital, I think of myself as working in healthcare, but really it's at the intersection of healthcare and food processing. We have to follow every food processing um, safety law and regulation to make sure that the milk that we're providing is the safest for babies, you know, vulnerable babies, even NICU babies. All right. How does it work? Somebody wants mm -hmm. to donate. Yeah. Uh, what's the process? Sure. So the first thing I would always recommend is that someone visit our website. There are lots of frequently asked questions uh, there. Same. And then there also is a donor screening form. So that's henryford.com backslash milk bank. Nice and easy. <laughs> and then from there, there's a donor screening and on that are just the, the questions that would be most likely to rule someone out as a donor, like maybe medication use or tobacco or alcohol use. Um, so those questions would be on that form. And so um, someone could fill that out. That'll automatically give us a response so that we know to contact that person and start the process, which would include um, another questionnaire, a phone call conversation, lab work, and some forms. It does sound like a lot, but we make every step as simple as possible. We know our donors are busy moms that don't have a lot of time, so we make everything as easy as possible. So you mentioned the hospital mm -hmm. uses the, uh, the, the, the donor milk. Mm -hmm. I think about when uh, my kids were born, yeah. there was mom and then there was formula. Right. That was it. Exactly. So now... Yep. How does it? How is it used? Sure. So uh, for any baby, the best option is going to be mom's own milk, because mm -hmm. um, that is literally the milk that that mom makes for that particular baby. <laughs> um, so it's it's the perfect nutrition. But for lots of different reasons, some babies don't have access to it. Um, it could be a medication that the mom has to take is not compatible with mm -hmm. breastfeeding. Could be a diagnosis isn't compatible. Could just be that um, there was a traumatic birth and it took a little bit of time for the mom's milk to come in. When mom's own milk isn't available, then donor milk is the next best option. And that has um, been explored by the American Academy of Pediatricians and we know that that's the next best option. So we then are able to offer it to those families if they're interested. Yeah, plus um, there's, you know, sometimes the baby and the mom is just not working. Yeah, absolutely. And when that happens, we have our lactation support to help in any way that we can to make sure that, you know, we're prioritizing having mom be able to breastfeed her own baby. And while we're waiting for that to work, that we have this other option to help feed. 
So milk is milk, really. Uh, <laughs> you know, if human milk is human yeah. milk. Yes. Um, but um, there's some things you need to do, uh, mm -hmm. like cow milk. We have to have it treated mm. and uh, pasteurized. Right. Does the breast milk go through some similar yes. thing? Yep. So our breast milk does get pasteurized. Um, it goes through a gentle pasteurization process. So basically we take the milk that's donated to us, we mix it together, we bottle it, we seal the bottles, and then we gently pasteurize it following all the um, best guidelines for doing so. And um, then once we have a batch of milk that's been pasteurized, we send one bottle for testing to make sure the pasteurization did its job that um, nothing would grow in that milk. There's no bacteria or virus present. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we're able to dispense it. All right, so mom uh, gives birth. Mm -hmm. um, they're there at the hospital for uh, however long. Yeah. Everything's fine, they go, but yep. the milk still, it's not, uh, be, maybe the situation, yep. um, the mom might be on a prescription that you can't. Sure. So do they, can they go to the milk bank and then get supply? Yes, so right now we are, as we've discussed, very yeah. new. Um, so it's changing on a day-to-day -day basis. Our first phase was to be able to provide milk to the hospitals, which we've been able to do. And now we're really exploring how to make it more available in the community. Since things are changing so rapidly, I would say call us, give us a call. And if we have milk that we can help, um, you know, provide to that baby, we definitely want the opportunity to do so. So um, our phone number is also easy. It's 517-205-MILK. <laughs> and so you can call us and talk to our staff. And if there is um, available milk for outpatient use, we would certainly make that available for that yeah. baby. We, could, we had that uh, formula crisis. Yes. Yeah. What's the state of that right now? Um, that's not something that I'm too knowledgeable about. I believe that it's mostly been resolved, but you know, yeah. um, not my area of expertise. But I do know that it just brought a lot of attention to the availability of donor milk and that this really is the next best option over formula um, for most babies. Yeah. So I, I think that that's been a big takeaway from it. Very cool. And it's right here in Jackson. And it's right here in Jackson. Yeah. One of only 30 in the country. Awesome. Well, great to have you here. Thank you. And uh, accept our uh, happy wishes to everyone at Henry Ford Jackson Hospital during uh -huh. National Hospital Week. Thank you so much. The uh, manager of the Milk Bank at Henry Ford Jackson Hospital, Aaron McGreal Miller. Next.